Okay, uh, guys, so good day, class. Uh, I'm sorry for the um, no update regarding sa tong class. Uh, because due to technical problems, naguba ako ng laptop ng samad. Ako ng mga files. Uh, Kadalag do lagid ng mga all recordings ko. So, ako nga subject, then I have to start all over again. So, luckily, hindi na kita nga chapter yan eh. Uh, Kasi nakayo ako ng laptop, I've been trying to fix our balik sa recordings but still, ang software mismo uh, sa akong hard disk uh, ano, rubbish yung akong kakurap. Okay, so with further, uh, without further ado, let's just proceed sa itong next nga topic which is now the uh, laboratory safety and microscopy. Okay, so in this course, uh, you will be discussing or uh, will be known how to proper, properly protect yourself regarding sa ito ng mga ng mga specimen, mga laboratory practices regarding sa how to control microbes uh, para hindi ma-infect ang inyong nga uh, or para hindi siya uh, madali ang sukanimalay, mamuna how to prevent pathologic mga microorganisms from spreading. Okay, so, Microbiology Laboratory Safety Practices were first published in 1913. They, uh, they included admonitions such as the necessary na magsuksok sang gloves, uh, mga proper hand washing, uh, after working with infectious material, kag-usa pa is, uh, hindi lang after but also before ka mag-umpisa. Why? Because if you are handling mga uh, specimen or in your culturing, di ba, mga microorganism, where nga base makontaminate. Also, as food technology sa inyo, it's very important that hygiene nga para hindi madala sa pagkaon. To practice proper hygiene, it is before and after. Okay, ang hand washing. Next is... Uh, disinfect all instruments immediately kada gamit. Ibig sabihin, kada tapos gamit, hugasan, disinfect. Okay? Uh, next is use water to moisten specimen labels rather than the tank. Uh, like, mag, uh, do gamitin mo yung mga laway, okay? Touch mo yung mga hand sa yung mga lips, uh, sa yung mga tank muna. So, you need water na. Okay, sa so una, ang mga practice doon muna dahan. Uh, exposure to infectious agents, uh, Okay. Uh, disinfect all contaminated waste before discarding. Okay, you have a uh, prepared solution nga muna. So, the end, uh, you will be discussing ano na nga prepared solution, how to properly disinfect it before mo i this uh, ihaboy okay, or in this regard. Next is report appropriate uh, report appropriate personnel all accidents and exposure to infectious agents. These guidelines are still incorporated into safety programs in uh, diagnostic Microbiology Laboratory. Okay, nga man. Uh, to prevent or to know what uh, you need to do next. Okay, if you are exposed with such uh, specimen or reagent, okay, uh, ano ang imong uh, ulubrahon okay, if you are exposed to that certain uh, uh, microbes. Okay, you need to take off your laboratory gown. Muna. Uh, next is ilis ka sa mga bayo, okay, yung green spares, mga muna. Uh, wash the body or sa nga part, okay, to ensure nga hindi magkapit ang microbes. Muna. Next, uh, safety programs will uh, expanded uh, to include the proper handling of your uh, biologic hazard encountered in the processing patient specimen and handling infectious microorganism. Aside pa da, you also have your fire and electrical safety. Okay, yung ginagubra sa Bureau of Fire Protection, uh, gina-inspect nila if the building itself or the laboratory is uh, fire safety, uh, yung kagang ilang electrical sy uh, system is functional to bula sa mad. And the safe, uh, ginatawag na nga safe handling or mga paano ka mag-bit-bit uh, sa mga specimen, okay, mga imodin mga apparatus, Okay, para hindi mabuka, mamuna, safe handling. You have storage para sa mga, spes, uh, yung mga, mga reagent. Aside sa reagent, also for your mga spare na specimen para hindi sila dasig maguba uh, ang yung mga uh, extra ng mga specimen. Proper storage nila, mga ito mo sa proper na ref. Uh, separated sila, mamuna. Next is the disposal of uh, chemical and radioactive substances. Uh, also, ang technique for safety lifting or moving mga heavy objects. Uh, best example that is ang mga fix with ang mga posture. Okay, if you are uh, trying to lift up heavy object. Na. 
Next is uh, in areas uh, of the country prone to Okay. Uh, where, where was I? Okay, and then uh, as a country, mga natural disaster, uh, we have here example, you have your earthquake, hurricanes, and storms. Since I get as a tropic, sa Pinas, you only have to worry about earthquakes and also hurricanes. Uh, next, you have safety programs, includes your disaster preparedness plans that outlines the step to take emergency. You have your mga uh, fire drill, mga earthquake drill, okay, that is provided sa school or sa imong uh, company yung ginasundan na katrabahoan. Although all the microbiologists are responsible for their own health and safety, the institution and supervising personnel are required to provide safety training to familiarize your microbiologist with known hazard and workplace and prevent exposures. Like, uh, laboratory safety is considered in the integral part of the overall laboratory service and federal law in the U.S. mandates pre-employment safety training, followed by a quarterly safety uh, in service, uh, safety training regulation are enforced by your United States uh, Labor uh, Department of Labor, uh, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is ang yung acronym is OSHA. Okay, OSHA stands for Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Please do remember ang uh, atong mga meaning sa mga acronyms. You have your Regulations and requirements may vary, uh, vary based on the type of laboratory and updated regulation. It is recommended that the laboratory reviews this requirement as out the, uh, outlined by your OSHA. Your microbiologist should be knowledgeable, properly trained, and equipped with the proper proactive materials. Uh, in working with control while performing duties in the laboratory, investigations that causes of the accident indicates the necessary exposure to infectious agents occur when individual becomes sloppy in performing their duties and when they, uh, they deviate their standard safety precautions. So, sabihin sa mga ga, care, naging careless na, naging dotaw, hay natin na sanay na, pwede ra lang ang mga laboratory o uh, technicians or mga workers or you have here microbiologists uh, magka uh, high risk na for infections. You have your uh, methods here which is your sterilization, uh, your disinfection and decontamination. Okay, so we will be differentiating, uh, differentiating the three of them. First, you have your sterilization. Sterilization is the process that kills all life form of microbial life. Yung class A, okay, everything it. You have, it includes bacterial endospore, which is, uh, your endospore is like an envelope coating your bacteria or microorganism, uh, giving it uh, the ability to survive longer. And maskin ano man nakaharsh ang iyang uh, environment. Okay? You have your disinfection. Disinfection is a process that destroys pathologic organism, but not necessarily all microorganisms. Okay, class A, your disinfection targets, okay, targets your pathologic. Okay, ano yung pathologic? Pathologic nga mga microorganisms, okay, they are the ones who give illness. Okay. Next, but not necessarily your microorganisms, your endospore or prions. However, some disinfectants will kill mga amun nga type ng microorganism, pero mas lawig ang iyang exposure time. Ibig sabihin pa, tiniron mo anay ang iyong mga disinfectant. Next is your decontamination. It is the removal of pathologic microorganisms, uh, so items are free to handle or dispose of. Many factors limit the success of the degree of your sterilization, disinfection, and your <coughs> decontamination in a healthcare setting, such as your organic load. So your organic load means that the organism and other containing materials for, for example, lang yung mga blood or mga body fluids, ano mga body fluids sa pagid, you have your mga urine, uh, kung body fluid, pagid, if ang iyang stool basa, okay, body fluid, you have uh, sweat, mga body fluids, yung ginakolekta man na, you have, may mga laboratory experiment man daan in regard sa ito na sweat, okay. Uh, next is, uh, the type of organism present, okay, kung ano na, you have your, um, itong example ta, in the sport, Nga, microorganism. Then you have the concentration. Uh, 
concentration sa imong disinfectant dili sa tamaan ka labsaw nga nadamuan siya sang water okay hindi man sa tamaan ka concentrated mo na then you have your exposure time okay ano ka dugay sa magtake effect okay to the germicide the physical and chemical nature of the surface you have here mga hinges mga kilit you have your mga cracks you have your rough or smooth surfaces next you have your temperature pH your humidity humidity is like the water content sa room okay and the presence of your biofilm the biofilm ya class uh, it is a product of your microorganism okay para ma uh, do ma-cover niya ang mga microorganisms sa dalong ang my biofilm would be uh ang chura sa biofilm uh I'm searching for you. Uh, biofilm. Okay. Picture. Ah, uh, what? May mayong example. Uh, here. Uh, can we wait? Nah. Okay, I'll buy you film. Uh, next sample. Uh, okay, I'll read you know, bacteria and biofilm. Okay, uh, this is a river. Okay, do makita mo duga iglak iglak sa mga inubin na ang mga tubig sa balde nga dugay na wala na replisan di ba ang jura yan na is do may uh, do may film sa babaw so that is your bio okay so let's now proceed you have your methods of your sterilization okay, your methods uh, it's under physical and chemical your physical methods is divided into your mga dere okay so resulta na lang sila <coughs> since kapila ko na ni mga record tiga record lang gudya class your incineration Okay, incineration is the uh, method of treating your infectious waste. Ibig sabihin, di burn mo sila. Okay, hazardous material into you, ashes grid. Okay, the temperature for your incineration is 870 to 980 degree Celsius. Okay, your incineration is the fast, uh, it's the safest method to ensure that no infected materials remains. Okay, in the sample or container when disposed of. Okay, your mga prions, okay, it is a very infective proteins and not eliminated, uh, uh, not eliminated uh, using mga conventional method like your disinfectant, pangmula na. Okay, that's why you uh, do incineration. Okay, to uh, totally burn everything. Eh. Patay kita na nga mga microbes. Uh, therefore, incineration is recommended. Okay, ang cons lang, okay, because it produces toxic air emission and presence of heavy metals in the ash and have a limited use of incineration in the United States. Next is your moist heat. Okay, moist heat or other name niya is your steam under pressure. Okay, it is usually used to sterilize your mga biohazard, uh, trash, and heat stable objects. Okay, your autoclave. Okay, yan muna yung method yung ginagamit. Okay, it's used to this purpose. Autoclave is essentially a large pressure cooker. Your moist heat is formed uh, of the saturation of steam under your one atmosphere or atmosphere pressure. Your, ang yung shortcut sa one atmosphere is 1 atm. Okay, for your, or yung uh, other conversion factor, yeah, is 15 pounds per square inch or ang munang hindi sabihin sa ang PSI. Okay? To ensure that uh, the pressure cause, uh, causes the reversible denaturation of the enzyme and structural proteins or ang component gids ng imunga, bacteria, or microorganism. The most commonly used steam uh, sterilizer is uh, sterilizer in the microbiology laboratory is the gravity displacement autoclave. Okay? Steam enters at the top, okay, yung flow sa air. Okay, halin siya sa babaw. 
sa itong chamber. Okay, ito ang chamber because steam is lighter than air. It displaces the air in the chamber and forces it out of the bottom of the drain vent. The two comma sterilizer, uh, sterilization uh, temperatures are your 121 degrees Celsius and 132 degrees Celsius. Okay, biologic waste that includes broth, your, also your mga solid media is usually autoclave in the 30 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius. Anong tsura sa nga ito ng broth for your uh, microbiology? Broth nga hindi sa bawaya klasa for mga cooking. Ang broth yan ang klasa, yeah, it is uh, culture media. Okay. Ah, balangin mo basta brot sa bawo da yon. Ah, microbiology. Ah. Okay, this is your brot media. Okay? Pwede ka da kabutang sa microorganism para magtubo sila da. Okay, what is the purpose of uh um using moist heat or sterilizing it. Okay, to ensure that kung may culture ka da or may buhi on kasama ni nga brot, ang microorganism din butang mo, mo lang nang mabuhi. Okay, nga man. Because if you just put, uh, if you just make a brot, di ba, then out of nowhere gamitin mo lang siya da yung liwat, how sure are you that the brot you cultured is the one that you, ang matubo is ang mo lang din na. Diba? That's why you need to sterilize it. After mo sterilize, itaguon na siya sa ref for storage na. Okay? Kaya insured mo na nga, it is 100% nga wala na sa other microorganism. Next, uh, solid media. Okay? Yung solid media. Okay. Yung solid media, ah, uh, here. Na. Okay, this one, you have your petri dish na uh, solid media. Okay, kita mo lang doon, jelly na part. Okay, different media. Pwede ka maubra. Next is your tube uh, media. You have your more to nang madiscuss sa uh, bacteriology. Okay, you have your slant. Okay, ang jelly ang kapakilid. Then you have your tip. Just gastritin mo sa. Then, this is a uh, jelly na media na sulot. You can culture anything, uh, anything depende on what type sa microorganism. Okay? Next is your, uh, <coughs> in, a, <coughs> in a displacement sterilizer. Okay? Then kung taas naman ang mga temperature and you're using 132 degrees Celsius, it's only for 4 minutes lang. Okay? Nga usually, yung ginagamit na mo sa laboratory when I was still an intern, or kag isang naganon ako, nag-gobra ako sa medtech, I uh, usually just use 30 minutes in 121 degrees Celsius. Nga man, because when you are using pressure cooker, dugay na magsaka ay temperature. Di sabihin, dumaslawig pa yung muhulat nga mag-32 siya. Okay? Mag-32 degrees Celsius ha. Then for 4 minutes, malanggalik da yun. Okay, after mo na yan da yun, 4 minutes, yeah, you need to wait for the steam to pagwatanan. Di ba? To cool it off a little bit. Ibig sabihin, for 4 minutes lang doon naglawig kulat ka. So, kung 121 lang, dasig yan ma-reach nga muna ng temperature. Then, you just proceed with your sterilizing kung time countdown muna. Okay, if face-to-face uh, -face na kita, hoping, uh, I will just call your attention to uh, para makita nyo ano itong nga autoclave para dito sa itong eskulahan. Ang autoclave ta sa eskulahan would look like this. Uh, automated siya sa amon sa una. Isang atin muna autoclave. Oh, wait, bro, wala ka pa kita autoclave. Doon dyan, autoclave. Okay. Ang autoclave looks like this galit. Okay pa. Ay, hindi ko nag-discuss autoclave. Wala pa rin ka pa kita. Okay. Okay. Ang autoclave dito sa eskulahan, ang muna na iya nga tsura. Okay. Pero mas high tech to. Pero ang ginagamit naman sa eskulahan, ang mga you have your mga screws diri sa babaw. Iwan mo na yun. Ginapulpo ko na naman sa bato kayo ay nagdiagalak. Na. Next, screw seed. Uh, okay, so diri is pretty much self-explanatory naman din. Same lang. Ang uh, diri sa dalom, you have here. Uh, if you are using... Sa dito. 
Drea. Fractures multi ways containing body fluids of blood. On the other hand, is often sterilized at 121, uh, 132 degrees Celsius for 30 to 60 minutes and allow penetration of the steam through the waste and displacement of the air trapped inside the bag. Kaya kung magamit kaya for disposing sa atong na body fluids, ya class, ha? Because your body fluids, for example, your blood, okay? Kaya daw damo, uh, syempre, da, ayaw, want penetrate ang steam para mapatayag yun ang microorganism na arada, di ba? So, you need a longer period of time, okay, para to ensure na uh, masterilized ka siya. Next is, uh, your prions require much more extensive sterilization procedure among a mass dinapili na lang incinerate. Several options are recommended for the removal of prions from surgery, a surgical instrument or other laboratory materials contained with a high risk tissue as your brain or your spinal cord and eye tissue. According to the eighth uh, edition of the Principle and Practices of Infectious Diseases by Elsberg, uh, 2015, yan na published, there are four options of the astralization. First, you need to autoclave it at 134 degrees Celsius for 18 minutes in a pre-vacuum sterilizer. Okay, pre-vacuum na siya, sterilizer. Then, ang other is autoclave at a 132 degrees Celsius for one hour in a gravity displacement. Okay. One hour, a gravity displacement, sterilizer. Next is immense in a one and sodium hydroxide for one hour. After mo na i, ano, i provide and the immense, you need to remove and rinse it with water. Then, you autoclave mo siya in a uh, same nga uh, mo itong uh, autoclave this babaw for a 121 degrees Celsius. Okay? Or in a 134 kung pre-vacuum sterilizer ang yung mga gamit uh, for one hour. Or immense fourth nga ano uh, <clears throat> for options immense in a 1 and sodium hydroxide yapon for 1 hour then heat in a gravity displacement at 121 degrees celsius for 30 minutes then clean and subject to routine equipment sterilization you have here a uh, float uh, illustration picture of the autoclave already okay, so i don't know much about sa aton nga uh, autoclave because siyempre hindi man ko machine sa dira doon machine but the process is up kung gang hambal nga ato nga steam sulod siya panaog sa dayon sa airflow vent as na nga dili sa water supply okay na uh, will cause uh, magpasulod or mag cause pressure sa ato nga chamber okay so let's proceed next your moist heat Okay, your moist heat is the safest and simplest physical method of sterilization. Moist heat, gamit ka sa init tubig. Diba? Moist heat, in init nga, tubig. Then you have your dry heat. Your dry heat, ya class, requires longer exposure, about, about around one and a half hour to three hours, and higher temperatures than your moist heat which is 160 degrees Celsius to 180 degrees Celsius. Your dry heat oven are used to sterilize are uh, used to sterilize items such as your glassware, oils, petrol, uh, petrol tum, or mga powders. Nga man, when using dry heat, ya class, okay, kaya kung moist heat yung mga glassware, you will see mga patches, mga puti-puti, kung magmala na. Then, kung oil, syempre, you cannot mix your moist, di ba? If you're talking about moist, talking about water. Di ba? You cannot mix water and oil. Also, sa petrol and tum, then, your powder is especially powders. Diba? Hindi pwede mamix or mamix ng tubig ang powder. Next, you have your filtration. Okay, filtration niya is a method of choice for antibiotic solution, toxic chemicals, mga radioisotopes, mga vaccines, and carbohydrates. Nga man, because they are all heat sensitive. Filtration of liquid is accomplished by pulling the solution through the cellulose acetate or cellulose nitrate membrane with a vacuum or uh, sa uh, ang iyang asulid lang. This is your uh, filtration of air. Uh, your filtration niya class nga ginagamit sa mga air vents. Okay? Sa mga hospital, kapina sa mga operating uh, room, operation room. Okay? It's what you call your high efficiency particulate air. 
They are your HEPA filters. Okay, it is designed to remove microorganism larger than 0.3 millimeters from isolation rooms, operating rooms. Okay, and also for your BSCs. Your BSCs stands for your biosafety cabinets. Ionizing, okay, and I, uh, is another method. Wala lang siya na bold. Okay, ionizing energy gamma rays or your uh, X, uh, uh, UV. Okay, your UV. Among other yan name. Your ionizing radiation is used for sterilizing disposable such as your plastic syringes, your mga catheters, or gloves before use. Okay, the most common chemical sterile line, okay, when you're talking about chemical and is your ethylene oxide or your ETO, okay, which is used as a gaseous form for sterilizing heat sensitive objects. The main disadvantage of your ethylene oxides are the length, uh, lengthy cycle times, and the potential of health hazard it produces. Your vapor based hydrogen peroxide and oxidizing agent that have been uh, used to sterilize your HEPA filters. Okay, yung ginagamit sa pag sterilize sa atong nga HEPA filters is your uh, vapor phase nga hydrogen peroxide. Okay, your mga metals or mga non metal devices such as your uh, medical instruments. Yung ginagamit da is uh, agua oxidada. Okay, agua oxidada. It's also no, uh, another name is uh, hydrogen peroxide. Okay. There are no toxic byproducts produced using your vapor phase or your hydrogen peroxide. Okay, your hydrogen peroxide plus plasma on the other method that use hydrogen peroxide and generates a plasma by exciting the gas in a closed uh, chamber uh, under the vacuum use with the use of radio frequency and microwave energy. On the methods D you have here. Uh, physical methods of disinfection. You have three physical methods of disinfection. You have your boiling. Okay, this is disinfection. Class added to Subaya, you have sterilization. Okay, okay, sterilization day. Dito mo maglasa. Okay, sa aton nga dito. Okay, your disinfection. Okay, naging disinfection, ginatarget ya lang. Usually, ang mga pathologic. Okay, di ba itong sterilization? Right here, sterilization, tananggid, patsyon. Disinfection, pathologic lang. Okay? Then, yung contamination, removal of pathologic mag sa mga instruments. Okay, where are we? Here. We have here, boiling uh, at 100 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes, which kills vegetative na mga bacteria. You have also here pasturing at 70 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, which kills your food pathogen. Tandaan yung ning term ha, pasturizing. Okay, you have your pasture. Siyempre nagubra sa pasture method. And also, this is very important sa inyo as food technologies when dealing with your food. Okay, without damaging the nutrient, uh, nutritional value or the flavor. And also, with the use of nanonizing radiation, such as your UV and ultraviolet rays at our long wavelength and low energy, because they do not penetrate well, and organisms must have a direct surface exposure, such as your working surfaces. Why is it that you can use it food? Naman. Because if you have bacteria, you can use it in the food, you can use it or hindi can use it in the UV. Okay. Then you have here chemical methods of your disinfections. Okay, your chemical disinfectant comprises many classes. Okay, this includes your alcohol, aldehydes, mga halogens mo. Higher halogens example is your chlorine and chlorine compound. Your peri-acetic acid, your hydrogen peroxide, your quaternary ammonium compound, your phenolic chemicals uh, used to destroy all life are called your chemical sterilants. Okay, chemical sterilants, ubuso yung gintanan. Okay, uh, do under the sterilizer, uh, sterilization, your biocides, okay, however, these are same chemicals. With the use of shorter period as disinfectant, your disinfectants used on a living tissue or skins, okay, are what you call your antiseptics, and that's the term. 
Okay? Ang disinfectant ginagamit sa ito nga panit. Okay, di ba? You have kung magpa-hospital ka mo yung mga terms nga you have your disinfectant because it removes microorganisms sa imo mga skin to ensure nga tinlo. Okay? Resistance to disinfectants varies with the type of microorganism. Okay, you have your bacterial endospores na naman liwat. Okay? The species is your bacillus species and are most resistant. Okay, followed by your micro bacteria, which is an acid-fast bacilli, and also mga non-envelope viruses, which is uh, your pilovirus, mga fungi, ay mga vegetative, nga mga non-sporulating, sporulating, bacteria, for your example, is your gram-negative rods, and mga envelope viruses, you have your herpes simplex virus. <coughs> which are most susceptible with the actions of your disinfectant. The Environmental Production, uh, Protection Agency or your EPA, okay, tandaan nyo niya, Environmental Protection Agency, mga tandaan nyo mga kunyong sige di class, uh, registers chemicals disinfectants used in the U.S. and requires manufacturers to specify the activity label. Uh, Now, uh, continuing that their EPA stands for Environmental Protection Agency, registers chemical disinfectants using the U.S. and requires manufacturer. Dapat nga ginaspecify din nila ang activity level sa kada compound and working dilution. Okay, what do you mean by working dilution? Ibig sabihin na you don't use the uh, 100% of the chemicals or your disinfectant. You dilute it, ginamixan mo siya sa tubig. Okay? Very common nga disinfectant nga nagamit sa Pinas, okay, is your Zonrox. Okay, you need to make a 1 is to 10. Okay, this is the loom, may explanation na ito, this is the loom. Taro na na. Okay, therefore, my communities, we must recommend appropriate disinfectants uh, should check the manufacturer's cut sheet or ang iyang uh, production information for the classes and the organism that will be killed. Okay, and also, generally, the time necessarily to kill or ang ilang nga uh, uh, time of exposure. Okay. Uh, for the microorganism increase in direct proportion to the uh, microbial load bagid. Ang ginamin yan is, ano ka damo ang yung mga specimen nga gina-disinfect? Uh, gina okay. Ibig sabihin, uh, uh, it's either mas damo ang yung mga disinfectant. Okay. Nga, mix na ha. Nga, prepared na. Okay, to ensure nga patay gid ang microorganism na arada. This is particularly true for the instrument of contaminated with organic materials such as your blood, ang pus, and also your mucus. The organic material should be uh, mechanically removed before chemical sterilization to decrease the microbial load. This is uh, analogous to remove the dried food from utensils before placing them in the dishwasher. And it is important for cold sterilization of instruments such as your bronchoscopes. Uh, bronchoscope, di ba, nang pag-check ta sa bronchoscope na. Ah, uh, wait. Bronchoscope. Ito na may pat lang. Let's check. Bronchoscope dyan. Ito sila nagagamit. Ang familiar. Hmm. Ito ipat ko sa purpose at ang gabuan ko sa ko. Okay, it's the type of water concentration solution that is very important. Uh, hard water may reduce the rate of killing microorganism in addition to tanggit uh, plus. Condition to 60 to 90 percent ethyl isopropyl alcohol solution, uh, volume per volume. It is optically bactericidal because the increased ability of water H2O to hydrolyze the bonds on proteins and molecules makes the killing of microorganism more effective. Okay, the meaning ni class, uh, nga a importante ginamix ang aton nga zone rocks with your water. 
Okay nga man, because the water itself will help your zone rocks in enter the body of your microorganisms. So, uh, nga man, because um, when I was still a student like you, okay, ang among teacher gin explain niya why you don't use a uh, 100% solution of zone rocks. Kay it will just cause the shrinkage or ma shrink lang ang microorganism, then buhi pa man na siya gihapon. Okay? Then uh, ang imong purpose sa imong water is to help the uh, the zone rocks kay di ba na mix na sila to help the zone rocks enter the cell wall. Na iya nga purpose therefore then ang zone rocks will do its work uh, melting or destroy uh, destroying ang uh, component or ang iya nga unod sa imong microorganism therefore killing the microorganism itself. Ang no purpose sa zone rocks ka water solution. Okay? Federal Dice Bonds, ethyl isopropyl alcohol is a non-procidal and does not kill in those four. And it evaporates quickly. Then it is limited to skin and antiseptic on Wait, tinan ko to. On thermometers and injections are vial rubber, septa as your disinfectant. Stabilize hydrogen peroxide as demonstrated, bactericidal, verocidal, and sporocidal, and fungicidal activity. Commercially, it is available at 3% degree, uh, 3% hydrogen peroxide, and has been used as a disinfectant on intimate surfaces. The most common disinfectant in the U.S. is your hypochlorite solution or your N. AOCL, your 5.25% to 650. Preferred as your household bleach. The disinfecting capability of bleach is bactericidal, also virucidal, and also fungicidal. The meaning of that is it can kill bacteria. Verocidal can kill virus, your fungicidal can kill fungi, and mycobiogel, uh, it can also uh, kill fungus or my, uh, and also your sporocidal can also kill, kill spore forming. Okay, it is inexpensive and effective, it is not uh, decreased uh, based uh, on the quality of the water used in the solution or preparation. One disadvantage is the hypochlorite may cause minor ocular or oropharyngeal or spinangial aggregation. Uh, it is individual exposure to high concentration or uh, without a proper ventilation. It is also corrosive to metals in high concentration. It produces uh, discolors in fabrics, mga puti, ga, uh, mga color ga puti, and can produce toxic gas if improperly mixed with ammonia or acid in a other cleaning reagents. Okay, the CDC, tandaan nyo kaya tandaan mga acronyms tayo. CDC stands for Centers for Control Disease Control and Prevention. Okay, I recommend that the tabletop should be cleaned with blood spill with a 1 is to 10 pollution of zone rocks because of their irritating fumes and aldehydes. Uh, formaldehydes or your glutaldehydes, okay, the component, uh, are generally not used for surface disinfectants. For glutaraldehyde, uh, which is a sporocidal or kills in those four, in 3 to 10 hours is used for medical equipment such as your bronchoscope uh, because it does not corrode lenses. Okay, it's not bronchoscope. It's the first thing you use to use through your mouth. Nose, ako na bay. Next, para acetic acid, effective in the presence of organic material, is also been used for the surface sterilization of surgical instruments. The use of literally hides or para acetic acid is called your cold sterilization. Your quaternary ammonium compounds are used to disinfect bench tops and other surfaces in the laboratory. However, gross contamination with organic materials such as your blood may inactively heavy metal or quaternary ammonium compounds, thus limiting their utility. They are not most often used as on non-critical uh, surfaces such as your floors, furnitures, and walls. 
Finally, your phenolics, such as your common laboratory disinfectants, your app pill, or by Rick's Bankers, uh, actually mga brand names, MJ, are derivative of carbo uh, carbolic acid or phenol. The additional uh, of detergent res uh, results in the products of that cleans and disinfects are the same as the concentration of 2% to 5%. This concentration are used for cleaning mga French tops or mga top ng sa pokoan. Next is chemical safety. Okay? Mostly mga ha acronyms ang ID. So, please remember them. Okay? First, you have your OSHA. The what class? Uh, publish the hazard communication standard which provides a certain institution of educational practices to ensure the laboratory personnel are through have a true thorough working knowledge of the hazard of the chemicals which they work. This standard have also uh, a standard has also been called by the employee right to know. Okay, as an employee, not right to know, you need to understand the uh, hazardous or ano ka delikado ginagina pang handulan mo. Okay, that's why as a medical profession, kami may mga ano kami. We have our hazard fee, okay, because we handle mga infectious materials. Aside pa da, you have your mga corrosive, kag mga uh, delikado ng mga chemicals na ginahandle namon. That's why uh, we are given or we are provided with a hazard fee. Uh, next, is it mandates all hazardous chemicals in the workplace be identified and clearly marked with the National Fire Protection Association, the NANYA, NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, they will starting with the health risk, such as your car uh, carcinogen, okay, among the chemicals that may cause cancer, your mutagen causes mut uh, mutations of the nucleic acid or your DNA, or your RNA, which is your ribonucleic acid, and then your tetratogen that causes birth defects, yaka baog, your tetratogen, and hazard classes. Uh, for example, your corrosive, harmful to mucous membranes, such as your skin, your eyes, and other tissues. Mayarami kita mga poisonous, and also uh, flammable and oxidizing. Each laboratory should have a chemical hygiene plan that includes the guidelines on proper labeling of the chemical container, manufacturer's uh, material safety data sheet. Okay, your MSDS, okay, MSDSS, which is stands for your Material Safety Data Sheets, okay, and they are written, uh, written safety con uh, training and retaining programs. Also, your mga hazardous chemicals must be inventoried annually every year, gina, to know kung saan nyo naging baton, saan nyo naging buksan, okay, mga list, okay, sa mga laboratory reagents. Dawat ha? Saan o nabaton? Saan o ginbuksan? Saan o ya-expiration? Okay, so it is annually reported. Next, uh, in addition with the laboratory and requirements, uh, so kadula ako ba? For uh, provided letter of the uh, hazards. In addition to the laboratory required, with the uh, maintain of the file on every chemical, they use and corresponds with their um, material safety data sheets. The letter of the non-hazardous chemicals, such as their saline, uh, so uh, so that this can be included in with the other MCSDS. Okay, your mass spills and disposal commendation, the section of the typical MC MSDS includes your substance name, okay, kung ano sa chemical, okay, name, uh, name, address, telephone number of the manufacturer. Okay, ang iyang hazardous uh, ingredients or yung component. Next is yung physical and chemical properties. Then, ang iyang uh, fire and explosion data. If it is uh, mga flammable, mga muna, if it is explosive. Next is toxicity. Uh, then, yung uh, health effects and first aid if ever ma ano ka sa Japanit. Then, you have your stability and reactivity, your shipping data. You have your uh, spill, leak, and disposal procedures. Also, your personal protective equipments. And also, iyang nga paghandol mo. Kag kung sabihin mo siya, itago ko. You have here an example or your uh, the diamond for your national fire protection. Ang iya is 
association for your association is ang uh, yung uh, diamond for precaution so muna makita mo usually sa mga battles sa mga reagents di ba you have here ang imo color blue color blue stands for health hazard you have four na highest and zero sa pinaka nubo four can be lethal three can use serious permanent injury two can cause temporarily incapacitation or residual uh, injury and one you have cause for significant irritations lang then uh, zero for no hazard at all your flammable mangi half uh, flammability hazard you have four pinaka taas and zero as the lowest four will be pressed and readily burn at normal temperature sibig sabihin sa room temperature pa lang siya may chance na sa magsunog okay mag evaporate siya then it will cause a uh, flame next number three can be ignited under almost ambient temperature ambient uh, uh, maskin daw ang um, pal palibot mo hindi man taman ka init that it can cause still fire okay Number two, must be heated or high ambient temperature to burn. Okay, the, uh, tamo na niyang do, uh, safety pa man siya, kaya nga man, because need gidiaan ay ipahit di siya para maging vapor, then di ka siya pwede maging flammable. Okay, number one, must be preheated before ignition can occur. So, pahit preheat na yung mga reagent, then di ka siya maka-cause flame. And zero, it will not burn. Then you have your instability hazard. Okay, instability hazard is um, okay. it will cause explosion. Okay, nga man. Okay, for number four, as the highest may explode at a normal temperatures and pressure. Ibig sabihin, dapat stable gid ang yung mga paghandol. Okay, number three, may explode at a high temperature or a shock. Okay. Next, number two, low, violent chemical changes. Okay, kung paano mo siya gin-mix kung ginagamit na bala. Okay, violent chemical changes at a high temperature or pressure, it will cause an explosion. And number one, normal, stable. High temperature makes unstable. Ibig sabihin, kung dira lang siya ginapainitan, dira lang siya magiging unstable. If wala mo man siya ginaboil or ginaheat up, okay, it will remain stable and it will be used. Okay. Then you have your special hazards. Special hazards are usually mga uh, icons or mga shortcuts. You have here uh, ALK. ALK stands for your alkaline acid. Uh, acid. <laughs> acid stands for your acidic. Your COR stands for corrosive. OX for oxidizing. Your SA stands for aspirant uh, gas. And you have your radioactive na logo. Your W tapos dua ka bar. Okay, stands for reactive, uh, violent, or explosive with water. Therefore, W, okay, naging cross out, hindi siya pwede i-mix sa tubig. Then you have here, uh, hindi siya pwede ma-mix sa tubig and also it is oxidizing. Okay, reacts violently with water or explosive with water and it is also excited, uh, oxidizing. Sabi na combination. Okay, those are your special hazards. Okay, you have here a BSC, a cabinet. Okay, this is a fume hood. Called the fume hood or cup hood or fume closet. It's a typical of local ventilation device that is uh, designed to limit exposure to hazardous fo uh, fumes or vapors and dust. Ang ginagamit mo. Your employee should be familiar with the location of the organization of MSDS files in the laboratory so that they know where to look at every event of emergency. Fume hoods are provided in the laboratory to prevent inhalation of toxic fumes. Fume uh, hoods protect against chemical odor by exhausting air to the outside but they are not HEPA filtered or uh, trapped. Pathologic microorganism. Okay, fumes mo lang yung mga target You don't target microorganism or mga pathologic. Okay, it is important to remember that BSCs, I'll discuss later in the next mga chapter, uh, is not a fume hood, but uh, uh, work with uh, toxic or notorious chemicals should be performed while, while wearing your tightrail gloves in a fume hood, uh, while wearing your fume mask. Okay. Spill should be cleaned up as using fume mask gloves and improvised or improvable moisture aprons nga man because kung magagamit ka ganyan sa mga chemicals it uh, may cause 
Ang uh, irritation kay basic corrosive siya. Okay, that's why you need to wear mga mask, uh, gloves, uh, kompleto, gid na. Uh, lab gown, mong na. Your acid and alkaline and flammable and reactive spills kits are available to assist and render any chemical spills harm, uh, harmless. Okay, so we have now on chemical, uh, fire safety. Uh, uh, continue ko lang ni sa next nga video since do tama na nika, love. So that would be all class. So again, sa ating delay, uh, I will do uh, double time. Okay, so see you on next video.